Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sneha and today I'm going to share my favorite products from 2017. I'm going to start with skincare and then move on to the makeup bits and I will have timestamps down below if you want to skip to the makeup favorites. Starting off with these head wraps that you put around your hair to protect it when you're washing your face and taking the makeup off. It's just super cheap. So I got a set of these two for about a couple of pounds from Primark and they just do what they claim to do. So I really enjoy these. Then this year I was looking for a cheaper micellar water and I came across this by Garnier and it's really good. It doesn't irritate my eyes yet takes off most of the makeup. I also believe you get an oil-based one from the same company if you're interested. So that may be also good if you use a lot of waterproof products. But this is something I've loved this year. Now toners, I've discovered three this year. This first one is almost over. <laughs> I have about so much remaining. This is from The Body Shop and this is their Tea Tree Skin Clearing Mattifying Toner. So although it says it's mattifying, it's not drying to the skin, which is why I love using this in both summer and winter. So this is definitely good, especially if you have oily and acne prone skin. Next are two acid-based toners. This one is the Alpha H Liquid Gold with Glycolic Acid. And this is the Pixie Glow Tonic and I love both. They're both exfoliating toners. So it's lovely if you have acne or even acne scarring because it's going to fade away the scarring over a period of time. They don't sting my skin and they're just effective. <laughs> so really love these. Another product that I think is an exfoliant and a moisturizer and everything together is this by Sunday Riley. It's their Good Jeans and I've used half of this up. And this is again a more gentler version of compared to the glycolic acid exfoliants that I've shown you. This one has lactic acid. And again, it's just beautiful and lovely for anti-aging, good for acne scarring, acne, all of that. This is fantastic for the skin. So love this stuff. Talking about moisturizers, you guys know if you followed my channel that I love Ombreli's skincare range or especially their moisturizers, both the lay cream concentrate and the mattifying version, the Hydra Matte, I believe. But this year I discovered two other moisturizers. This one is the Clinique Dramatically Different Moisturizing Lotion and I really like it. So I think after I'm done with the Ombreli's ones, I'm going to switch to this because this seems to be a lot lighter than the Ombre Release one. And the second moisturizer that I've discovered this year is the Effeclar K Plus by La Roche-Posay. This is, I think, more expensive than the Clinique one, so I'm not sure which one I'm going to prefer, but I am going to try this out more during the summer months. I got it in fall of this year, I believe, quite recently, actually. So I haven't really had a chance to use much, but I do use it on my oily T-zone currently, and it doesn't seem to dry out the skin. It hydrates, but it's very lightweight and gets quickly absorbed by the skin. Also, this one is supposed to improve your texture over a period of time, so I have to test that claim of this product, but so far I've really enjoyed using this. Sorry if this seems rushed, I just have a ton of products in front of me and I want to get through them <laughs> without making the video too long. For eye cream, I have switched December 1st to this one by L'Oreal. It's the Rewhite to Lift laser renew one this little tube and it is expensive for drugstore but i picked it up on sale and it's really good i think uh my darkness around my eyes i had a little bit but i think that's almost gone and also my lines are a little more plumper i feel <laughs> they're less obvious so i have been enjoying this as well so another skincare product that i've been loving is introducing oils especially at night in the winter months or colder months so this first one is by Farsali, it's their Rose Gold Elixir. This is a very lightweight oil that gets quickly absorbed into the skin without leaving um, oily residue, if that makes sense. And it smells lovely. If you love um, oranges or vitamin C, uh, or basically citrus scents, you will love this. I really enjoy using this and I think it also has helped in fading away my scarring. So really nice. The second oil is also by Farsali. This is their Volcanic Elixir. Now this one is uh, quite a bit thicker than the Rose Gold one. So 
this does make my skin feel oily when I use it but this is also good for lightening the acne pigmentation that's left behind so I've really been enjoying using this and the final skincare product is a sunscreen this is by La Roche-Posay I'm almost done with this and this is their Antilio 60 ultra light sunscreen fluid SPF 16 fantastic sunscreen that doesn't leave the skin oily so very lightweight gets quickly absorbed into the skin and has a matte finish so really love this now on to makeup i have quite a few products here and in no particular order i think i'll start with maybe highlighters i just have them out here so the first one is limited edition but it is the dose of colors mirame highlighter and it's something i have loved this year ever since i got this it is one of my top favorite highlighters. I try and not use it as much in tutorials because it is limited edition and because it is so stunning and beautiful. But it's amazing. This is what that looks like. You can see here. And then speaking of highlighters, I have two other picks. First is this highlighter by Becca. It's in the shade Champagne Pop. Again, a gold based one. But this is also a peachy gold. There you have it. That's the second one right here is the Becca Champagne Pop compared to a Mirame. And this third powder highlighter is by Makeup Forever. And this is their Pro Light Fusion one and this is the shade 02. So this is what the three look like. So Mirame, this is the Becca one and this is the Makeup Forever one. They seem to read similar on camera but hopefully you can see the difference right there. The last highlighter is a liquid one that I'm obsessed with, and that's the Marc Jacobs Dew Drops. And this is something I picked up, I think, earlier this year. Beautiful. So this is heavy duty though. It has kind of glittery chunks if you use too much. So it's good on its own, or if you take a small amount and, you know, uh, put it, mix it in with your foundation. So this is what that looks like. This is a thick swatch, this last one. And then if I blend it out, it smells of coconut, <laughs> it's tasty. If you love coconuts, you're gonna love this. And then that's the kind of glow it gives the skin. Beautiful. So love those highlighters this year. Okay, now let's move on to blush since we're doing cheek products and highlighters. So this is the only blush that I picked up, I think this year or late last year, and I really enjoyed it. These are shades that I don't have in my other palettes and they're all matte which is beautiful. So these are the blushes that I've enjoyed this year. Next I'm jumping on to eyeshadows. And all of these eyeshadows are mentioned in my top 10 video if, if you haven't seen it already. I'm going to link it on the screen if you want to. But the first one is this Viseart palette in the shade Chroma and this is their Theory palette. Absolutely love it for the pigmentation, the color selection, anytime I want to do a smoky eye, this is the palette I reach for. The next palette is Anastasia Modern Renaissance. So as you all know, it's probably the favorite so for so many people, but this is just amazing. The colors are beautiful, they are pigmented, and it's such a versatile palette. So this is another favorite. Next, I have two more Viseart palettes. These are their regular 12 pan ones. So these two, this guy is the dark mattes and this bottom one is called warm mattes and these are amazing eyeshadows. You guys know that I love Viseart eyeshadows and these are no different but these are my latest additions and I have loved them in 2017. And finally the last palette that I'm obsessed with that I got in the second half or yeah the second half of this year I believe. This is the Natasha Denona Sunset palette. This is what it looks like and I love it. <laughs> this is the palette that brings me joy. Just look at the colors. I, I don't have anything else to say. I already have a three looks one palette video with this. So I'm going to link it on the screen right now if you're interested in watching this, but this is totally worth the money. Next, moving on to lip products. Uh, first, I have these super cheap one pound lip liners from Primark. They're really nice. They're just lip liners. And I really like the shades Red Velvet and Toffee. Next up are a few shades from my favorite liquid lipstick formula, which is the Smashbox Always On Liquid Lipsticks. And just for reference, this is Girl Gang, Out Loud, and Boss. These three shades are what I would recommend from the range. But just in general, if you like a matte finish liquid lipstick that stays put all day, these are the ones. 
Another liquid lipstick that I've really loved this year is by Dose of Colors and sorry this is from the limited edition Daisy and Katie collab and this is the shade Savage which is a beautiful dark bulldox color um, so beautiful and I've loved it it's not as drying and as long-lasting like the Smashbox one but it's a really nice comfortable formula and it's quite a beautiful shade for this time of the year and finally I don't know if I picked up this lip palette this year or la late last year but I absolutely love the Anastasia lip palette volume one just look at the shades you have possibly every lip color that you can create with this particular palette I love the nudes in here actually love all the shades in here so this has been much loved this year now I have two powders that I've picked first one should be of no surprise it's the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Finish Airbrush Powder <laughs> and I have it in the shade Medium and if from the entire Charlotte Tilbury range I have to recommend two products it would be this powder which is amazing it's super finely milled and it just looks flawless and makes the skin look poreless without it looking like a typical powder on top if that makes sense so absolutely love this and the second product I don't think I discovered this in 2017 probably last year but I still love it and I have this tiny nub for this black shade it's their rock and coal uh, gel liquid eye pencils or something like that it's their eye pencils and this is the shade bedroom black which I absolutely love it stays put on my watery eyes and I absolutely love it so these are the two products I would recommend from Charlotte Tilbury brand another powder that I would recommend is the studio fix powder from Mac so although the product is not new for me I had the wrong shade before so I used to have this NC 42 and I don't know on camera it doesn't look as orange but in person it looks really brown and orange compared to my skin tone and then I picked up C40 which is much more olive toned and is a better match for my skin so this is the new product that I picked up and I really love it it has beautiful coverage so if I want to skip concealer on an everyday basis I can just put a light layer of foundation or even go in with just this powder foundation so really love this one and hopefully when I keep them side by side you see how much more orange this one is and how much more green and olive tone this one is a contour product that I've loved this year is the Kevin Aquan sculpting powder in medium you guys have seen me use this in so many tutorials so I don't think I need to talk more about this two mascaras that I loved and discovered this year first is a drugstore one which is the L'Oreal Paradise Ecstatic or the Lash Paradise in the US love this second one which is a recent find is this Marc Jacobs what is it called velvet noir major volume mascara amazing i have this one on actually on my lashes if you can see that and they're both amazing for my lashes they give amazing volume length everything but without flaking much so i really like that talking of lashes i do have two lashes that i've discovered this year these are both by the brand esquido and this first one is in the style unforgettable and the second one is in the style desire the top one unforgettable one is very natural looking so I can wear it on an everyday basis and nobody can detect I have fake lashes and this one is when I want slightly more volume and when I really want volume I love the house of lashes iconic one and I'm dying to try that iconic light so that's something I want to try but these are the ones that I've discovered this year and really enjoyed using and then with that I've loved using the Esquido companion lash glue and it's a lash glue that is really strong and doesn't uh, get the lashes off quite easily so I really like that I hate it when lashes tend to come off from the inner corner or the outer corner it's not a cute look so really like a good lash glue and this is one okay concealers I have three picks the first one is this Maybelline eraser eye and this is the shade nude I've tried so many other shades when I was in the US I don't think they have this particular shade there it's quite different between the UK and the US so sorry if you're in the US but this is something I would recommend as you can see it's close to my skin tone slightly lighter and I really like it to use it as an under eye brightener so that's something I really enjoy the second one should be of no surprise it's the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer that's the one I have under my eyes today and I'm in the shade medium it's a really nice thick found uh, not foundation concealer 
that has amazing coverage and therefore you need to use less if you overdo it it can look cakey so and if you set it well it does not crease under your eyes so i really like this one finally i have the nars radiant creamy concealer it's an all-time favorite concealer but i recently picked up the shade custard as well so it's really nice for brightening my under eyes i don't use this concealer for my acne scarring it's just for under the eyes so as you can see uh, yeah this one ginger is a lot closer to my skin tone compared to custard which is a bit lighter so it's good for brightening okay a few more eye products this is the elf makeup remover pen and if you've seen my how to create a winged eyeliner video you know how much i love this it's perfect for cleaning up any eyeshadow mistakes or any eyeliner mistakes and it's like only one or two dollars so i really enjoy using this I'm going to link my eyeliner video here if you want to see this in action. Okay, some more eye products. This is the MAC Mixing Medium. And if you have hooded eyes, this is going to be a life changer for you. Because once you seal any eyeshadow, any glitter, any eyeliner, whatever you want to put right here close to the um, crease area, you layer this on top, let it dry, and then when you open your eyes, it's not going to transfer that annoying fold that you have for hooded eyes so I really enjoy using that especially for say cut crease or if I'm putting glitter on my lid and I don't want it to transfer to my matte crease area definitely recommend this product the next product is a glitter product this is the glam crystal dazzling gel liner from the brand collection and this is a brand quite easily accessible in the drugstore in the UK I'm not aware if it's available in the US but this is a very nice dupe for the Urban Decay glitter liners. This is the shade Funk 3. I don't know if you can see that. It's like a nice nude uh, glitter liner. So it's good if you put a pencil or a gel liner first or a liquid liner and then layer any of these glitters on top. It makes for a really nice sparkling liner effect. Another glitter product that I've discovered this year are the Stila Magnificent Metal ones, the glitter eyeshadows. On their own, I do not like to use them because they do transfer, so I tend to use them with some of my glitter bases, so either the NYX one or I tend to use it with the MAC one, the MAC Mixing Medium, or I like to use it with the Lit Cosmetics glitter base. So with those, these are smudge proof, they're so convenient to use, that's what I love about these. So really like using these i think we're coming to an end we've made quite a big dent a uh, few more products remaining this year i don't think i've discovered these primers necessarily but i've used them in a different way if that makes sense so it's these two primers the makeup forever smoothing primer and the benefit professional ones so instead of using these primers all over the face now that i am getting older <laughs> and i'm getting more fine lines around my mouth and smile lines especially so I tend to use this so that the foundation doesn't go into my smile lines as much, if that makes sense. So really enjoying using these as, uh, what do I call it, primer for my smile lines, I guess. <laughs> so I've been using these two for that. The foundation this year, I don't remember which ones I particularly bought, but I definitely know that I picked up the Smashbox one this year and I really like it. It does have a tendency to separate, as you can see the top portion looks darker than the rest of the foundation, so I do think you have to mix, give it a good mix before you use it, but it's a foundation um, that can be worn throughout the year, I feel, because it's such a hydrating formula. And despite me having oily skin, this hydrating formula actually lasts all day long. So it does get a little shiny throughout the day, but it doesn't come off if that makes sense so i've been really enjoying this foundation and then i think we're on the last um, bit here i'm going to talk about brushes that i've discovered this year the first one you should be surprised it's morphe brushes they are super affordable and i have a few that i would recommend this one morphe e19 is really nice if you want to pack on color at the inner corner or if you want to pack on glitter or glitter glue or any of that stuff. Very stiff and flat um, and it's tiny so it's good for detail work. The next flat brush which I got recently is the Morphe M421 and I love this. This is perfectly tiny enough for me to apply it and it's good for people with hooded eyes is what I'm trying to say but it's really nice to pack on glitter. Again put your lid, uh, eyeshadows, 
really nice. It's a good sized flat brush. The next two are kind of blending brushes. The first one is the Morphe E17, which is like this. And it's what I've used today to blend out these eyeshadows in the crease. Really nice, soft to use and fluffy enough to blend out eyeshadows. The next one is a Morphe E36. And this is actually good for putting eyeshadows on the lower lash line or for, you know, applying eyeshadow to a certain point. Um, like if you want to apply a very precise location for a dark eyeshadow or something. But I love using this to apply my concealer. So the Kevin Aquan Central Skin Enhancer that I use for covering up my acne. This is the brush I use to <laughs> really apply it to the target areas. And of course you guys know that I love my Wayne Goss brushes. So I believe this year I picked up the eye set and the face set if I'm not wrong. Um, probably late, late last year and, or early this year. So, But I have videos on that that I'm going to link on the screen or you can check them out on my channel. And I think that's a wrap for favorites of this year. I hope I've not missed out any products, but if I have, I will list it in the description box below when I remember them. But I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Open eye. Feel the waves cut through me